Hello and welcome to Obo Winfrey. Today is a very, very exciting day for the ICO as it's the first time in many months that we've been able to play to a live audience. I know the musicians are really looking forward to this and it's going to be a particularly special start to the summer. Now last week I had the chance to have a quick catch up with the irrepressible Dermot Dunn who is the accordion soloist with the orchestra. So let's see what he's got to say about the concert. Dermot, hello. It's been almost a year since we last spoke. And firstly, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you very much. How have you been getting on musically over the last year? And more importantly, how are you feeling about performing with the ICO to a live audience in Limerick? Well, um, it, yeah, I think for all musicians, it's been, or most musicians, it's been quite a quiet year. Uh, there wasn't a lot going on for a while, but I also teach in the university in TU Dublin, so that kept me busy at least. And uh, but then, uh, you know, in the let's say the spring, March, April, the wheels started turning a little bit, and there were quite a few recorded performances. So we've all got quite used to that recently, and it's great, you know, that we've had the technology and the ability to do that. Uh, so that that was good, you know, I, some really nice um, recordings which we have now because very often we just rehearse and we do a, a performance and there's no recording of it. Whereas now many of us have some really, really cool videos up on YouTube um, which we'll have forever, you know, so so that was good. So that was your first question and then you asked me about um, playing with the, the chamber orchestra again and the live audience which course that's going to be fantastic um, I mean working with the chamber orchestra is always a huge highlight and um, we're, we're doing a, a live broadcast from the National Concert Hall but the previous day we're playing in front of the audience in Limerick University so it's it's going to be almost like um, the two bookends of hopefully of the pandemic because the last live concert I played was with the orchestra in, uh, in the University in Limerick in September. Now I have to admit, I don't know anything at all about the composer Molique, let alone his accordion concerto. So what can our audiences expect to hear in terms of musical style? Well, I have to admit, I don't really know anything about the guy either. <laughs> He's not very well known, but I do know he lived in the um, second half of the 19th century. And I think he's written a number of pieces for violin and flute, maybe some string quartets. Um, and there was a famous um, concertina, concertina player, um, Giulio Rigondi. I think he was Italian, Swiss Italian, and he was a virtuoso concertina player traveling all around Europe and also commissioning many composers to write pieces for, you know, for him to showcase his talents. And one of them is this concerto by Malik. So it's it's very much in the, you know, style of Mendelssohn, I think. You know, it really reminds me of that. Um, there's lots of, that's beautiful. It's, it's quite short. It's about 17 minutes, three movements continuous. There's loads of fast scales and arpeggios flying up and down. It's really, really light and cheerful. And there's a beautiful slow movement. It's, it's just really, really charming music. And of course, we're going to hear a lot of Piazzolla's tango music inspired by some of his favourite performers. Can you tell me a little bit about Piazzolla and his music? Well, um, I'd say audiences are quite familiar with some of Piazzolla's pieces, and I've played them quite a bit. And with the orchestra as well, I've played them on a number of occasions. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you've got I think two winning combinations with Piazzolla's music. You've got driving rhythm and great melodies. So like, what more do you want? And um, he wrote a lot of his pieces for his quintet, Nuevo Tango Quintet. And we're playing some of them on this program. Uh, for example, Esqualo, which he wrote for the violinist in his band, Suarez, who actually passed away last year. And it, it's, you know, to showcase the violin in the band and it, it Esqualo is a little shark and he used to go shark fishing with the violinist from the band and so that's that's why they called it um he called it Esqualo 
And then we have um, uh, Milonga de l'Angel, which is from a set of pieces about Angel, or Angel, the Angel. So this is the Milonga of the Angel. I'm not sure actually why he calls it that. Maybe Angel Angel is the name of a bar. I don't know. I, I, uh, could have been anything. I should find out. And we have um, Adios Nonino, which he wrote as a tribute to his father. But the, oh, wait, just talking about the band, then we play Contrabajissimo, which means like Contrabajo is the Spanish for double bass, Contrabass. And Contrabajissimo, like the Isimo means you know, big because it's a huge big piece and it has a massive double bass solo cadenza at the start, um, which Malachi will play fabulously. And that's, I think that's one of the best Piazzolo pieces. It's not so well known like maybe Adios Nonino or Libre Tango or Oblivion, but it's got, I think, the best Piazzolo melody in the middle of it. Um, it's really cool. And so I'm really looking forward to playing that with the orchestra. Uh, and there's also, uh, the, at the very start of Adios Nonino, because you were asking about showcasing the, the different people in the band, there's a big cadenza for piano, which was actually written by the pianist in the band, um, Ziegler, and Ellen Janssens is going to play that, so I'm really excited to have piano involved in this concert as well, because the piano is a big part of the sound in tango. So, you mentioned a lot of the Piazzolla pieces and the Malik Concerto. Do you have an actual favourite piece in the concert? Well, I really do love playing this Malik Concerto because we don't have anything really original. Actually, it's not even original for the accordion, it's for the concertina, but it's close enough. In the same way that the Piazzolla is not originally for the accordion, that's written for an instrument called a bandoneon, which is kind of like a concertina. Um, you know, the, the instrument goes this way rather than this way, the keys, you know. And also the sound is a little bit different, but uh, it's close enough that I can get away with it without considering it to be like a transcription, so, you know. So I don't really have any 19th century repertoire other than if I'm transcribing from, let's say, piano repertoire, playing something by, you know, one of the 19th century piano composers. So it's great to have something in that style, which, you know, is kind of at home on my instrument. Uh, so that's great to play that. And then I think Contrabajissimo from the Piazzolla tunes is yeah, it's a killer piece. It's just great. I'm really looking forward to catching up with the concert. Thank you, Dermot, for taking the time to chat to me today. And I hope the concert goes well. Pleasure. I hope so too. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There are two opportunities to hear the ICO this week. Today, live at the University Concert Hall in Limerick at 2pm. I'm not sure if there are any tickets left, but check out uch.ie as you will definitely need to pre-book. Tomorrow, the Irish Chamber Orchestra are live streaming from the National Concert Hall in Dublin at 8pm with tickets available from nch.ie. Take care and I will see you next week.